If you've been following our Engine of the Week series, we know, we know, there's a lot of LS engines getting featured. But can you blame us? Those are what many builders are focused on. That being said, there's obviously plenty of other engine work happening across the country, and sometimes the coolest engines are the vintage builds. We recently caught up with our good pals at Auto Machine Inc. in St. Charles, Illinois, to talk about an engine from 1929. That's right. This episode of Engine of the Week will focus on a 1929 Duesenberg Straight 8 engine. This video is sponsored by Pengrade. Precision, performance, Pengrade. Always the original green oil. And by Elring. Leading technology, leading service. Hey everyone, I'm Greg Jones for Engine Builder, and today we're covering something quite a bit different than the engines typically discussed in this series. We spoke with John DeBates of Auto Machine Inc. about a 1929 Duesenberg Straight 8 engine. The DeBates brothers do a lot of engine work from the 40s and 50s, which John jokes doesn't seem that old because he was born back then. But the shop also works on lesser known domestic vehicles from the early days and a lot of old European engines from the 20s and 30s. This 1929 Duesenberg is a straight eight dual overhead cam, four valves per cylinder engine. The customer was referred to Auto Machine Inc. by a body shop in Rockford, Illinois, familiar with the DeBates brothers' work. The customer's Duesenberg engine needed an oil hole re-sleeved and the block had a stud that needed attention, primarily. The shop ended up doing a few other fixes, but those were the main reasons the engine needed help. Here's John himself to tell you more. For a guy that had a, an oil passage that ran through the water jacket and it corroded through, so we had to disassemble the engine and bore out that and sleeve it. And we put it like a 10 inch long brass sleeve down in the hole to repair it. When I was repairing this oil hole, there was like three other holes that intersected it. So after I put the sleeve in there, I had to go in and drill them to make sure that the oil was gonna flow the right places and everything. And I was a little worried I might miss one, but he had a, a complete uh, little diagram of the oiling system, the whole, whole engine. This sleeve was half inch OD. The sleeve material, we just ordered a piece of uh, basically brass, thin wall brass tubing from gotcha. McMaster Car. The next step was to fix the block's deck surface and the stud that was misaligned, along with a few other small fixes to get the engine back to normal. Well, we just did some basic stuff, you know. I, I just polished the crank a little bit before I put it back in. We had to detail a couple other little things that the guy wanted while we were in there. We did fix a stud in the deck surface. Somebody at one time put a helicoil in, and the stud was leaning at about a 10-degree angle, and they had to beat the heck out of it in order to get the head on. Somebody tried to jam the head on it. That was one of the other reasons we got it, was they had kind of messed that up. So while I had the block all stripped down, we put it up in one of our hosses and made a, uh, an insert to go in there to eliminate the helicoil and took it back to the original thread and made sure it was straight up and down. The 29 Duesenberg engine got washed down before the shop put it back together, but all in all, the engine was in good condition for being 91 years old. I have never seen an engine before that looked like it was a Swiss watch. The lower timing chain on it, it's got two. It's got one that drives all the lower stuff, and then it's a dual overhead cam motor. So there's another chain that goes up from the one that I was dealing with. I mean, the chains are like three inches wide. Well, the crankshaft is completely yeah. polished. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just a beautiful piece to work on. I, I think they're like 420 cubic inch straight okay. eights, 285 okay. horsepower. That was non-supercharged one. The supercharged one was uh, 320 horse. I think uh, this was a 29, and I don't think they supercharged them until it's either 30 or 31, I believe. And then that was the most powerful engine up until the mid-50s when the Hemi came out. So it was out for a long time. I mean, you know... 
at 285 horse, that was at the time that Ford was dealing with the Model A at 40 horsepower. And in 32, he came out with his V8, and it had 60 horsepower. With that horsepower, you could get Duesenberg's close to 100 miles per hour. I don't know if I'd want to run at that speed in a 1929 car today, but there's no denying the incredible engineering and innovation at the time. With this 29 Duesenberg engine given a clean bill of health, the short block was returned to the customer's mechanic to finish the rest of the restoration from there. Well, that does it for this episode of Engine of the Week. A special thanks to our sponsors, Pengrade Motor Oil and L-Ring. And remember, if you have an engine you'd like to feature, please email me at gjones at babcox.com. See you all next time.